Facing the Lion by Joseph Lamasolai Lekoton, Chapter 2 The Proud One My age mates know my bravery. They say I am a lion. I roar day and night. My people speak Ma language, which is why we are called Maasai. There are many subgroups within the Ma culture, including mine, the Arial. The Arial is actually a mixture of two groups, the Sumburu and the Rendili. My mother is Rendili. My father is Sumburu. We are nomads. We live where it's best for the cattle, where there's good grass and water away from disease and pests. If the grass runs out or the water dries up, we move. If there's better grazing land somewhere else, we move. A warrior may walk 25 to 30 miles in a day to scout out new grazing lands. He'll just get up and go. He'll go look to see if the grass is good and for signs of predators or people who may want to steal the cattle. Then he'll walk back. Even at night, he'll know exactly where he is. He'll smell the trees and know that a particular tree grows in that place. Or he'll hear a certain bird and know exactly where that bird lives. When he returns, he'll discuss what he's seen with the family or the village, and they'll decide whether to move the herd. The Ma speakers used to live all over Kenya, from north to south. Nairobi, the name of the capital city in the south, is a Ma word that means cold. My great-great-grandfather used to graze his cattle as far south as Nakuru, 300 miles from where we live now. Today, there are more people more towns, more boundaries. There are national parks. It's harder to move around, and we live in smaller area in the north. There are several thousand areals. I don't know the exact number because we don't count people. It's taboo. It's considered greedy. Even when the government census takers come, we don't give them a number. My mom looks the other way and gives them names. She says my kids are so, so, and so, but she doesn't give them a number. She lets them figure it out. I was born at the end of the rainy season, so everything was green. People were happy. They didn't have to work too hard. The kids didn't have to take the cattle too far to graze. No one had to go too far to get water. The water was everywhere. This was in the Marsabit district, just south of the border with Ethiopia. It's an area of low rolling hills. The lowlands are dry, almost desert, but the hills are cooler and wetter, especially during the rainy season. At that time, my village was on the side of a small hill called Kemboi. Before I was born, my family was made up of my father, my father's two wives, my other mother and my mother, a much older brother named Parikan, who was my other mother's son and who became a father to me when my father died, and my two brothers. Ngolion and Matarion, who were eight and five years old. Ngolion and Matarion used to help my mother a lot. Most families have girls, and the girls will go get water or go get firewood. There were no girls in my family, so my brothers would do that, and people would laugh at them. The girls in the village would laugh and say, look at them. They're doing the work of women. But the whole family 
We just loved our mom so much, so my brother sacrificed their pride and brought water and wood and did other chores. But you can be sure of one thing. Both of them wanted a girl to be born the next time. Not my father. He wanted a boy because boys take care of the cattle. He'd have another herder. But my brothers and my mother wanted a girl. Our hut was under an acacia tree that still stands today. When my mother was pregnant, right up until the time of labor, she would go out and do chores. The evening I was born, she was part of the group of women who went to get firewood. Some of the midwives told her not to, but she likes to work, so she went anyway. That same evening, a bull separated itself from the herd and came up to my mother's hut. It was a bull from a cattle family we still have today. He never came to my mother's hut. Never. But that day, he showed up and rubbed himself on the hut. And one of the elders said, A baby boy is coming, whether you like it or not. About midnight, when the night is equal, as the elders say, my mom started to go into labor. Women came with herbs and other things. When I was born, someone ran outside and said to my father, Hey, Lekutun, Tiwalashi, baby bull. In my language, when a child is born, we don't say boy or girl, but Lashi, which means male cow, or Ngashi, which means female cow. My father made his signature sound, hey. Every man has a signature, a sound he makes when he wants to be known. Right now, if I came to my mother's hut in the middle of the night and I wanted my mom to identify me, I would make this sound, harumph. And my mom would say, that is my son. Even if it's after 10 years. So my father made his, hey, hey, and he said, yes, another herder is coming. And my mother and my brothers, <laughs> they were mad because they knew that now they'd have to work a little harder to bring a little more wood and water. My mom thanked the Creator all the same, and all these women came and started singing. When a baby is born in the village, it's a celebration. But there was a complication. Although it was the rainy season and everything was green, there was a disease in the area, and the people were worried about the cattle. A few days before I was born, the village had held a meeting and agreed that with grass and water everywhere, it would be a good time to move. Now, the village can't move the day after a baby is born, so they had to call another meeting of the elders. Hey, you know Lekotan's wife has given birth to a baby boy, they said. It's a blessing and we must postpone a day or two, and then we have to move. They talked and decided that in two days they'd move. Another problem was that I refused to breastfeed. I didn't want anything to do with it. For us, as in America, it's known to be healthy to breastfeed. But I couldn't do it. So one woman said, Oh, le masolai proud one. That's how I got my name, Lemasolai. He's proud. He refused to breastfeed. They tried every trick. They tried offering me cows. Our people believe even an infant understands about the cattle. Take that cow, my father said. I'll give you that cow, and I'll give you that one too if you breastfeed. But I didn't listen. At the time, there was a little cow that had lost its mom. It slept in the hut with us and some of the other little goats. My father had made a leather 
bottle to feed the calf with. And one woman said, hey, why can't he share with the calf? So I grew up drinking from the same bottle as that little cow. A lot of kids made fun of me and I put on a lot of weight because I got a lot of cream from the cow instead of getting milk from my mom. But my family gave me that cow. It was the first one I owned. Two or three days later, the village moved. I was put in a special carrying case made of cowhide and bamboo and placed on top of a donkey. My mother walked beside me. We traveled for a whole day to another area. So really, my life as a nomadic child started when I was three days old.